Hi, my name is Nighty, welcome back to our channel. And I've played a lot of Fallout, like, yeah, a lot. Baby. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. However, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it, and I wanted to change that. I wanted to become a Fallout master. With the upcoming release of the Fallout show on Amazon, which is set in the year 2296, shit. way up in the timeline after every game has already happened, I decided to spend the last couple days watching the entire Fallout lore from Fallout 1 all the way up to Fallout 76. Shout out to Noah Catwood Gervais who marvelously put together this 9 hour oh review of the entire thing, link down in the description, and I broke it down in digestible bits so you can also be ready for when the show drops. You're welcome. To start you off in the story, Fallout happens in an alternate timeline similar to ours where a very particular retro aesthetic remains from the 1950s and it's observable throughout the whole franchise. Around the year 2051, the resources of the world began to run out due to a heavy dependence on oil and uranium. Greta was right. So the countries formed commonwealths and began invading each other. USA invaded Mexico, the EU invaded the Middle East. This marked the beginning of the resource war. The battles continued non-stop. During this time, the tension between China and the USA increased, as well as the development of non-oil-based tech like power armors and small nuclear reactors. Forced into a corner in 2066, China invades Anchorage, Canada, and they are fought back by American military much to the disdain of the Canadian people. During this time, and in order to fight the biochemical weapons used by the Chinese, haha, <laughs> classic China, the USA contracts Westec to develop a general immunization agent and creates the Pan Immunity Virium Project. This is very important because this will later become the Forced Evolutionary Virus Project, or FEV, which is responsible for the creation of super mutants. Fast forward to the year 2074, USA invades China and with its new T-55 power armors manages to push the Chinese back. In the year 2076, USA violently annexes Canada to its territory and shoots any protests on site, which is what we see in the introduction video of Fallout 1. Bleak, I know. During this time, vault gained government funding and began building nuclear bunkers called Volts that would keep humanity safe in the event of a nuclear holocaust. This was known as Project Safe House. However, some of these vaults were designed with the intent of running experiments on its inhabitants. Out of the 122 vaults commissioned, only 17 were meant to run normally and protect the people that were inside of them. vault is also one of the companies responsible for much of the technology you see in the game, like the Pip-Boys, much of them presented in a funny 50-60s style infomercial. The continuous battle between USA and China led to a stalemate, with increasing civil unrest in both countries due to the expensive and lengthy war. Both nations eventually managed to resolve this with an exchange of nuclear bombardments. On October 23rd, 2077, the Great War started, lasting no more than a few hours, and the world was destroyed. Here's where all the events in the game begin to take place. In Fallout 1, you play as the Wandering Vault Dweller from Vault 13, which was never meant to open until 80 years after the bombs dropped, but when the water chip broke, you are sent out to find a replacement. This is one of the shortest games in the franchise and takes place in California in 2161. You are introduced to multiple locations and factions throughout the gameplay, like the Brotherhood of Steel, which is a neo-medieval faction with scribes and paladins that was formed by Captain Roger Maxon after he found out that the US government had sanctioned human experiments using the FEV virus, days before the bombs drop. Under Maxon's leadership, the newly formed Brotherhood's mission becomes that of gathering technology and knowledge to save keep it from mankind to prevent it from destroying itself again, and they are very easily recognized by the use of power armor. Along its way to find the water chip, the Vault Dweller runs into different settlements, like Shady Sands, which was established by the residents of Vault 15, and with the help of the player, later grows to become the New California Republic, or NCR. More on that later. The player is also sent to investigate attacks on trading caravans and is introduced to the Super Mutants, which are the main antagonists of the game, led by Richard Gray, aka the Master, who is a mutated... thing. Composed of several people and mutants, as well as the computer systems of the cathedral you find him in. His ultimate plan is to create a utopia made solely of mutants. The only caveat is, mutants are sterile. Which is a way that, through dialogue, the player is able to make him kill himself, making him realize his plans wouldn't work. The player can also find a city called Necropolis, filled entirely by ghouls, disfigured people exposed to radiation after the bombs drop and that have been alive for hundreds of years. Once the water chip is found and the vault situation is resolved, the main character being exposed to the life outside the vault is exiled by the overseer, cast back into the wasteland with the end credits showing you the effects of your actions and your choices throughout the gameplay. Absolutely brutal. Fallout 2 takes place 80 years after the previous but remains in the west coast where the town of Arroyo is struck with a massive drought. Again? Jeez man, you'd think these people would've learned. But this time you are the Chosen One, a direct descendant of the Vault Dweller, and you are tasked to find the Garden of Eden Creation Kit, or Gek, 
For short, for this, the player travels back to Ball 13, which is now infected with Deathclaws, a terrifying creature from the wasteland that's a classic throughout the series, but for whatever reason, this time around, they can speak. This game has a more political focus than its predecessors, touching on themes like slavery, with Vault City and its bureaucratic oligarchy government with a neo-neoliberal character called Inet, who forcefully take over neighborhood settlements. It touches on themes like sex, seen more from a transactional point of view, where you can basically sleep your way into getting things, which is why only fangirls love this game. You wanna watch me have a wank? It'll cost you a tenner. During this time, the wasteland phase of the apocalypse ends and the frontier phase begins, meaning that more towns are being established and the people start to venture further into the wasteland. You find towns like New Reno with different factions fighting for the control of it, one of them being the Mordino family, who manufactures Jet, a very addictive drug and another franchise staple, much like Menton, Psycho, Bofat, Hydra and many more. The main enemy pulling the strings from the shadows is the Enclave, an organization born from the remains of the US government and military officials who fled before the bombs dropped. Typical. And established themselves in an offshore oil rig, which is ironic considering this whole thing started over oil. Their plan is to erase all mutants and impure people and create a perfect society by modifying the FEV virus into a weapon, and they attempt to do this through slavery and human experimentation. So they're definitely really bad folk. After the Chosen One defeats these people, a new America starts and California expands into the East. Now before the meat and potatoes, some other mentions go for Fallout Tactics and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, smaller games that didn't quite hit the Fallout mark and which storylines are not canon. So I'll let you google them by yourself. After the disastrous follow-ups of Fallout 2, Bethesda is able to buy the IP with their pocket change and makes Fallout 3, the first 3D version of the game that revived the franchise in a very profitable way and that will forever put fans against each other over which one is better, this one or Fallout New Vegas. But I digress. Fallout 3 takes place in Washington in the year 2077 with the main character being born, allegedly, in Vault 101 and growing up as part of the tutorial to learn the basics of the game. But when you turn 19, shit hits the fan and James, your pops, disappears and your mission is to go find him. With the new title of The Lone Wanderer, the character visits iconic locations like Megaton, Rivet City and Tenpenny Tower. The last one having a very interesting side quest with a very ironic twist on inclusivity. Drop a comment if you'd like to know more. But the player eventually finds and rescues James, who's looking into reviving Project Purity that aims to build a giant water purifier in the Jefferson Memorial. After you help him get back into his work, the Enclave attack, still around despite the events of Fallout 2, and your father dies trying to keep them away from the project. The Lone Wanderer then travels to find a gag to finish fixing the water purifier and meets up with the Brotherhood of Steel in the Pentagon, now called the Citadel. The main criticism of this game that I feel might drift into the show is the portrayal of the Brotherhood as plain good guys in cool suits of power armor. Remember, the Brotherhood is an isolated faction whose only goal is to hoard technology. This version of the Brotherhood justifies being like this in order to separate themselves from the non-interventionist rigid philosophy of the West Coast branch. After traveling to Vault 87, one of the experimental vaults that was used to test the FEV virus on its inhabitants and fighting the super mutants located there, the Wanderer leaves with the gag and a new friendly super mutant companion named Fox. But the Wanderer gets ambushed and taken by the Enclave where he meets their new leader, a supercomputer named Eden who reveals their true plan, to combine the plant and the FEV to erase all non-pure people from the wasteland, certified assholes. The player is given a sample of the virus and escapes to reunite with the Brotherhood of Steel. Together with the help of a massive robot called Liberty Prime, they assault the memorial and the final decision of the game has the player either sacrificing themselves to fix the radiated purifier or one of its companions or carrying out the Enclave's plan and using the FEV sample. If there was ever a franchise where you can purposely choose to be an asshole, this is definitely one of them. A later DLC called Broken Steel lets you use Fox who is immune to the radiation to fix the purifier, thus sparing you and your other companions. Fallout New Vegas is what most people call the proper sequel to Fallout 2 and probably one of my favorite Fallouts. Set merely four years after Fallout 3 and taking the player back to the west coast, to the Mojave Desert, a place that makes everyone who worked there wish for a nuclear winter, Patrol in the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. You are put in the role of the courier, with the beginning of the game introducing you to Benny and the no-no side of his 9mm pistol, Maria, who, after uttering one of gaming's most famous phrases, Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Shoots you in the head twice, leaving you for dead. Now, Fallout 4. I'm just kidding. 
You are found by a robot named Victor and put back together by Doug Mitchell, who makes you choose your special stats in a very interesting way and you're welcome to the starting town of Good Springs. The main story takes you across the desert encountering different places and factions, like the Boomers, the Great Khans or the Powder Gangers, each with their own quest and side stories as well as other branches of the Brotherhood of Steel. As you travel you're also meeting some of the local fauna, like the Yao Guai, the Death Claws, Rat Scorpions, Rat Roaches, Night Stalkers and the Cassadors. Fuck Hello? the Cassadors. After reaching New Vegas and retrieving the Platinum Chip from Benny, you find the true nature of it, being a software update that's the key to control a massive killer robot army, and you get to choose between two or three main factions over the control of Hoover Dam, which is the final event where all quests lead towards. The NCR becomes an authoritarian elitist group, with the standard chain of command that roams the Mojave as a civilizing force. You could call them the good guys, but they are basically a satire of modern forms of government, which is comparative given the opposite faction you can side with is the Caesar's Legion, who are a group of slavers who take control over all the tribes by pure force and crucifying everyone who oppose them. They are extremely homophobic, which makes it fun to think how would modern Californians fare against 2281 Californians. Degenerates like you belong on on a cross. Other options are choosing to side with Mr. House, the genius creator of Robco, the company responsible for the Securitrons, founder and ruler of New Vegas who controls everything from an underground base where his body and brains are connected to a supercomputer allowing him to live 200 plus years. Give him the control of the robots and have him rule the Mojave as a tyrant, pushing the NCR and the Caesar's legions out. Or betray Mr. House, side with Yes Man, control the robots yourself and achieve a similar result, freeing the Mojave from both factions. You can also talk them into living. The beauty of New Vegas is whatever choice you make and whatever faction you pick is not technically bad as long as you can live with it. This game is also known for having some of the best DLCs in the franchise like Dead Money and Honest Hearts, which I don't want to spoil so I encourage you to give them a try yourself. Fallout 4 takes place 6 years after New Vegas and takes you back to the East Coast, to the Commonwealth that largely encompasses parts of all Massachusetts, including the old capital of Boston. The game begins for the first time before the bombs dropped in 2077. You receive a visit from a representative from vault -Tec who tells you that you and your family have a spot reserved in the local Vault 111. Soon after, an alarm sounds. You make your way to the top of the hill with your baby and get into the vault right when the first nuke drops. Inside, you are fitted with a vault suit and put into a cryogenic chamber and put to sleep for almost 200 years. But when you first wake up, you look across your chamber and see someone, called Kellogg, killing your partner and kidnapping your kid, Sean. The next time you wake up and with everyone inside the vault dead, you become the sole survivor and get back to the surface in search of your son and vengeance. You're back in your old town of Century Hill, now destroyed, reduced to rubble, where you encounter your robot butler who suffers from PTSD from being alone for 200 years and is static to see you again. A lot of robots you'll find in this game have personalities much like this. You traverse this new wasteland like many other fallouts and find iconic landmarks of the series, like the Red Rocket truck stop where you find this game's version of Dogmeat and take him as a companion. You then run into the Minutemen, a volunteer civilian defense militia, one of the game's many factions, in a place called the Museum of Freedom. They are led by Preston Garvey and his constant another settlement needs your help and is one of many ways Fallout 4 starts to become a game service that you play until you get tired of it instead of a game that you play until you finish. But I'm getting sidetracked. The main goal takes you to Diamond City, the main hub of the game where you meet some of the most important companions, like Piper and Nick Valentine, a living synth made from the likes of the real murdered detective Nick Valentine. The plot revolves around them, the synth, a robotic copy made from the likeness of humans designed to replace them. Throughout the story a lot of the side quests will make you challenge characters about whether or not they're real or replicas and put you in a position to decide if you consider these copies human. Once you track down Kellogg and kill him, you learn that Sean has been taken by the Institute, one of the main factions responsible for the creation of the synth and the supposed baddies of the story. The Brotherhood of Steel arrives at the Commonwealth in a giant airship called the Pritwin, led by Arthur Maxim III, who you meet as a child oh in Fallout 3 who is in direct conflict with the Institute giving their position on the use of technology against mankind and how the former represents everything they hate. The player can choose to join them and get access to more advanced Brotherhood equipment. To reach the allegedly evil Institute, the sole survivor travels to the glowing sea and meets with Virgil, a super mutant scientist that escaped the Institute who puts them in the path of the last faction, the Railroad, a synth liberating underground militia that presents the argument that synth are sentient beings with the right to live. This becomes one of the biggest moral choices that you have to make throughout the playthrough. With their help, the player enters the Institute and rejoins with Sean. 
preferred by them as father who is now an old man in charge of the organization. Sean has cancer and his dying wish is for his mom slash dad to take his place and become the new director. Depending on who the player chooses after this will ultimately determine who controls the commonwealth. Fallout 4 is one of the most colorful and filled worlds in Fallout. There's so much to see and explore and the looting and settlement systems allow you to collect things like nuka cola bottles, power armors, weapons, costumes, creatures, people. However, this being a single player game, there's no one but the player to enjoy them. And the ability to romance almost all companions in this game, except for dog meat, of course, that'd be weird, has led to fans creating more than 11,000 works of fanfic, almost 40 times more than the last title of the franchise. Thus we arrived on Fallout 76, the game that made me quit Fallout due to Bethesda's brilliant decision of making this an online multiplayer game with almost no storyline at the beginning. Further DLCs and the backlash created by the fanbase made them rectify this. That takes you back to the year 2102 before any of the previous games and takes place in Appalachia, located in West Virginia. You are a dweller of Vault 76, which opens 25 years after the war in an event known as the Reclamation Day, where everyone in the vault is tasked with populating the land which was less severely impacted by the nuclear bombardment of the Great War. A subplot has you find the overseer of your vault and some other quest lines and NPCs were added after several DLCs. But unlike previous fallouts, the underlying plot of the land is hidden in letters and holotapes. The game focuses more in the aspects that Fallout 4 was missing, which are the community building and the shooter-looter gameplay, where after looting your mind and your wallet off for several hundred hours, you get to show your friends and other random players your bases, which I'll defend given that some of them are amazing builds. But other than that, this is basically a grind fest designed to keep the player engaged for as many hours as possible, which is particularly punishing for players that don't put money in the cash shop, with some of the best items hidden behind that paywall, which makes the early game, for lack of a better word, dreadful. Everything we know about Fallout, like the Brotherhood of Steel, the Enclave, the Raiders and new creatures like the Scorched Beast, the Mothmans and more of the classic like the Feral Ghouls are included in 76 but serve no purpose other than being loot piñatas that you shoot at and watch the levels go up. And that's it! That's the plot of every Fallout. This of course doesn't encompass all of it, this game has been alive for 27 years after all. So everything in it from the fake corporations like vault Robco, Sunset Sarsaparilla, to the technology of the Pip Boys and the Stealth Boys, the miscellaneous items like Sugar Bombs, Dandy Boy Apples, Nuka Cola, all have intricate stories that can't be reasonably or faithfully covered in a single video like this. So if any of this sparks your interest or you are drawn to the IP from the Fallout show, which I'll be reviewing soon, hopefully it's good, I very much encourage you to try these games and explore this very interesting world full of post-apocalyptic, retrofuturistic, 50 style mayhem. But if you watch this fun to be really like. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite companion from your favorite Fallout. Dog meat, of course, can't say no to my best boy. Check out this video next if you want to know how not to make a proper adaptation. Check out Noah's videos, which I'm pretty sure took him a lot of time to make. Thank you to my supporters over at Coffee who keep supporting my oh channels and my. who are very financially literate. And as always, I've been at you hoping you the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.